if your singularity is a pole, you do not need to compute the full Laurent series to find its residue. Instead, we have a nice formula which picks out exactly the B1 term we need. In this video, we'll learn this formula to compute residues at a pole. So, we have a theorem which can help us, which says it's, uh, uh, A and B from the theorem are equivalent. A says Z0 is a so pole of order m, and B says, well, that means that your function f of z is, in the, is in of the form some analytic function pi of z divided by z minus z0 to the power m, where the pi of z0 is not equal to zero. Maybe kind of obvious to you, but let's take a fast look why this is true. Suppose a is true, let's show that b is true. So given that z0 is a pole of order m of f of z, uh, that means if we know that, that f of z can be expanded in a Laurent series with some analytic part over here and a principal part which uh, ends at the end divided by z minus z0 over to the power m, uh, which is an expansion uh, in the end years between uh, uh, 0 and r2. Now, we can define a phi offset by multiplying this by z minus z0 to the power m. Well, if you do that, all negative powers in your uh, power series over here, they will all vanish and your first term will be your uh, bm. So if you define your phi offset in this way, you have a power series with only positive powers, uh, which means that your uh, phi offset is analytic. You have to be a bit careful, of course, in B, uh, B because in bm your f of z, sorry, in z0 your uh, uh, f of z is not defined. So instead of set zero, you have to set phi of z equals bm to match it. So there you have your uh, analytic phi of z, which is not zero in uh, z zero because that's bm, which and bm in turn is not zero because uh, z zero was a pole of order m. So now it's from a to b, going from b to e is a even a bit easier. Uh, suppose your f of z is of this form, where phi of z is analytic and phi of z zero is not equal to zero. Uh, well, if uh, phi of z is analytic, you can uh, expand uh, phi uh, in a power series in z minus z0, the norm smaller than epsilon. So here you have this the power series where we put phi of z0 first because it's a special term, it's not equal to zero. Now your f of z, you get it by dividing by phi by z uh, minus z0 to the power m. So here you have your f. And the first term equals phi of z0 divided by z minus z0 to the power m plus higher powers of z minus z0. Phi of z0 is not equal to 0, which means by definition that f of z has a pole of order m. And now we are going to use our phi of z to compute the residue of f of z in z0. So how can we compute that? Well, what we want is this p1 term over here. But how are we going to get it? There's some rubbish in front of it. Well, we're going to use our phi offset. So phi offset equals uh, f of z times z minus z0 to the power m. So then we have our bm plus etc. bn. And here we get a z minus z0 to the power m minus 1. And here some other rubbish. We still want to get the b1, but we still have a lot of rubbish in front of it. Now we do, we're going to do the following trick. Uh, we're going to Dif differentiate a few times because if we differentiate once then the bm vanishes and the first term becomes uh, a bm minus one and we differentiate again and again and we differentiate the full first part away so how many times do we have to differentiate well we want to get rid of terms uh, up till z minus z zero to the power uh, uh, m uh, m minus 1 so if we differentiate m minus 1 terms this whole first part finishes and the new first ter uh, term becomes m minus 1 factorial times b1 plus everything which comes from this part over here plus some horrible rubbish we still don't know the b1 but fortunately we can get rid of this rubbish over here by now plugging in in this m minus 1 derivative by plugging in there z0 because if you plug in z0, you here you have all kinds of positive powers of z minus z0, and this part drops out, and you get 
amount of factorial times b1. You can uh, solve for your b1. Uh, how do you find your b1? Well, here it is. You have your phi, you differentiate it at minus 1 times. So sometimes you have to differentiate it 3 times, 4 times. Okay, you have your phi, you differentiate it a few times. You plug in at 0, you divide by m minus 1 factorial, and there you have your uh, b1. Or if you want to write it without your phi, uh, remember what phi was, the residue of f of z and z uh, equals z0. Well, first you have yeah, f of z, your phi was z minus z0 to the power m times f of z. So you compute z minus z0 to the power m times f, you differentiate m minus 1 times, plug in z0, divide by m minus 1 factorial, and there you have your uh, residue. It looks complicated due to this m which is there, but well most, of, most of your residues will be order 2 or 3 or whatever. So in that case, you have a, uh, m which is 3. So you uh, multiply by z minus z uh, 0 cubed and you differentiate twice and then you plug in your number. So in practice, this formula works like a charm.